Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I've been reading the book of Revelations today with the notion to to just get my own ideas about the book of Revelations because it has many uh, deep symbols in it and it seems to me it has a story a story that's relevant and maybe different for each person that reads it. So and so what caught my eye today was um a chapter, it was a vision that John had about a woman, a beautiful woman, and um, she was she was about to have, she was about to, she was with child and she was about to give birth, and uh, there, there was a big heavenly battle, I mean, Mahabharata type battle, and I will say there have been a few battles lately like that. But in the Bible, it describes a very, uh, a very vivid battle between um, Archangel Michael and his legions of um, angels on this like giant serpent thing that, uh, like um, Satan, that had all of his uh, fallen angels, and they were all fighting like crazy in the sky, and the the um, the dragon thing. He was about to try and. Um, to, to eat the, the child, grab the child as soon as it was born and eat it, which was, yeah, it's pretty gruesome. <laughs> so, but there was this big fight and the, the, the dragon, which might be like Satan, got cast down to the earth, kaboom, right? And in the meantime, the baby was delivered, uh, safely delivered and was born up to heaven. And so, and so, then, I guess to get even for the fact that it wasn't able to get the baby, the, the dragon had the notion that it was going, to, it was going to, to grab the mother, the beautiful mother. But some provision, it says, had been made for her to take care of her for a thousand days and 333 more days, a lot of days, someplace far off. And so she was either went or was carried over that way. And... Uh, the serpent wasn't able to get her, but he sent this great cloud of um, a water, like a flood, after her. But the earth uh, um, grabbed the water and, and, and stopped it from getting to her. So she got safely away. And so uh, it's a pretty good story in a way um, because the, the baby was successfully um, delivered and, and kept safe in heaven. And the mom got away too to bear more, say, children and um, and like that. And so um, I'd like to talk about that that beautiful vision that that John had with regard to ascension and my own experience of ascension lately. Um, as you know, <laughs> uh, we're we're coming on times we've when oh, the well, Ascension truly started, I mean, there was a big lead up, but it started uh, around September to December in 2012. And uh, things have been heating up lately. I guess you know there's probably quite, quite, quite a bit of commotion that's been happening in, in the way of clearing the world and clearing the darkness in the world um, during the solstices and during the equinoxes. And so we had a big clearing in, in June during solstice, summer solstice, and, and I, I'm expecting we can look forward to another big uh, clearing in September, when is the equinox will occur. And in addition, we have these solar events that come in and, and lift uh, specific burdens of darkness from the, from the human neosphere and from the human physical and emotional and etheric net. Uh, from time to time so there's been a lot of clearing and there's always the incoming light coming in and so more and more flooding in of a new creation and so during that time it seems to me uh, that there there have not been an insignificant number of men that have been participating consciously moment to moment moment in the ascension process but it seems to me that there have been more women than men who have who have accepted the fact that 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 um, 
that Christ consciousness is flooding into the world. And to account for this, I have to say that, um, you know, women in the world today, they tend to use their right brain more. And there's more like visionary stuff in the right brain. There's more intuition. And there's more of a, an instant grasp of the ability to have faith and hope and love than there is in, in the, on the left side of the brain. And I, that's why I think women are more, and women give birth and they raise children and they see in children promise for the future of humankind. And so these everyday activities of women and the way that they use their brain are, are helping them to, to, to more quickly adjust to the rapidly changing circumstances than they're helping men. Okay, so, so right about now it's coming down to men, all right, and, and it's men's turn to clear and to, to level up and to get the new software for their brains and their new, the upgraded, uh, cleared out um, body of light and that, you know, it's, it's men's turn that's come. And it's been a hard turning, too, because men are clinging, uh, in the main, clinging very strongly to their logical minds, okay? And their logical minds are what detains them in the third dimensional world of time and space. We're not there anymore, you know? So it's, it's difficult because their logical minds are not capable of grasping the current reality and they're having a hard time allowing the upgrades, especially of the, you know, the mental arena to take place. Push has come to shove, and it's time now for that to happen. It's time, as um, Lisa Renee wrote a beautiful blog recently called The Masculine Wound, and, uh, or else Masculine Wounding, and... Um, in it, she described the steps that, that both men and women are going to be needing to take in the very near future in order to accommodate the incoming light and change, changing reality of energy in the world. Uh, I thought it was beautiful. It was just a little more um, to the point than anything I've ever written or ever dared to write. But still, for certain, for a certain type of person, it's the perfect article, you know. So in it, the main point that I grasped is that she feels men must now step into the understanding and the actually indwelling understanding and experience perception of the right side of their brain, which is the feminine side of their brain, you know. In other words, become synthetes of the brain, exercise both portions equally. And I might add, so must women become more the rational and more the logical, you know, and not get carried away with emotion. So it goes both ways. So as you could say at this moment in time between now and September, mankind, mankind is stepping into the unknown uh, essence of its, its other half. It's, it's more feminine side. It's more trusting of it's more loving, it's more uh, having faith and hope side, okay? And so in that way, I'd like to, I'd just like to use that as a preamble for stepping into this beautiful vision that John had. Huh. It seems to me that the vision is about the energy of the right side of the brain, the feminine energy that both men and women have. And that the, the story about this beautiful woman high up in the sky who, who sees a, like a Mahabharata terrible battle of light and dark, of, of God's angels and the, and the Satan fallen angels and like that, and yet nevertheless successfully conceives a, a beautiful child that is sent up to heaven. And then she herself escapes to a far place where there are provisions for her, even though many obstacles are set against her. What that means is that, that the feminine side of us, whether we are men or women, is what will save us, 
what will save us in this circumstance of of the very changing upgrading of life very intense experiences of ascension that's what i think and and further the fact that she successfully bears the child that it's then taken safely up to heaven it, to me that means that's a very simple explanation it's just my explanation it it seems to me that that this feminine side this trusting side this loving faithful side of of all humankind is what will birth new earth birth the children of new earth and carry us all up to the higher frequencies of the fifth dimension in Christ consciousness so in other words it is it is our faith and hope and love it is it is the part of us that is the spouse of god whether we are a man or whether we are a woman it is the part of us that that happily and faithfully accepts the unknown and and rises to an understanding of what is new that is the part of us that will see us through and and earth and all her children all her peoples will be will be saved by that so that's my thought i'll include the um I'll include the chapter below and a beautiful picture that I found and I wish you all the very best. I wish you all a chance to feel, you know, this is the chakra here for faith. You touch this chakra with your fingertips and and in case you're ever wondering what to do next, you can just feel faith that way. So God bless you all and keep you until the next time we talk. <laughs> Bye.